Hello, everyone. Sorry for this little delay. Today we have uh, the fewer people in the audience, and the actual recording is going to be very uh, useful. So UNESCO Cluster Bureau in Almaty is starting a new series of webinars that will be dedicated to the movie industry in Central Asia. Specifically, the development of this industry locally in the local markets and international markets. Basically, in the conditions of the pandemics, COVID-19, we can only work in this uh, remote or virtual format. And our speakers today, they are unable to join us physically. So the, we will be using this virtual format uh, to deliver these lectures. I just would like to remind you that this series of webinars is happening within the framework of the project for strengthening of the movie industry in Central Asia that is being implemented by UNESCO Bureau in Almaty with the support of the Republic of Korea via the Korean Fund. The topic of the first uh, webinar sounds like this, the co-production possibilities with Germany, regional and national movie funds, foundations, or basically how to find German co-producers. Our today's speaker will be Ms. Simone Baumann. Uh, she is a German co-producer who uh, has behind her more than 25 years of experience with the movie industry, filmmaking industry, lots of implemented uh, documentary and uh, action movie projects. When she starts her presentation, she can introduce herself in some more detail. I just would like to remind you that our audience, the you have the possibility to ask your questions via our chat facility. Uh, you can uh, submit the questions right in the course of the presentation. Ms. Bauman will be speaking in English, but she also speaks some Russian. She will respond to these questions. And um, if you are unable to stay with us for the whole one and a half hours, the recording of this webinar will be available at our YouTube channel. And also the various announcements for, uh, for the availability of this recording and the other webinars for the movie industry will be available at our website. And now in the chat, we uh, you can see the links where you can subscribe and basically get the notifications uh, for this webinar and some other movie industry initiatives organized by UNESCO Cluster Bureau in Almaty. So thank you very much for your attention. I'm pleased to pass the floor to Ms. Simone Bauman. moment. Um, I would like to add a few words about me. Um, it's true uh, what uh, Maya said, that um, I have a long track record in producing and co-producing, um, but at the moment um, I'm the managing director of German Films, and German Films is uh, the German Film Promotion. It's an organization what, what is um, uh, promoting and marketing German cinema outside Germany internationally. So we are working a lot with festivals, with film markets, uh, and so on. So this is um, an important tool for films today as well. As well. Then after production, uh, you have to bring the films into the market and uh, it's uh, not going automatically. You also have to work for that. So it's very important just as an explanation. And also, as Maya already said, um, you, if you have any questions, um, please write them immediately. And um, I can see it. I can also read in Russian, so I, I will understand it, and I will try to answer uh, immediately. Um, since the subject today is uh, how to co-produce Germany, how to find co-producers, the financing system, and since I don't know in the audience how much you know about uh, production, co-production, international rules and stuff like this, so I'm, I'm trying to explain it um, in a little more general way. 
and um, to explain how how it's working. So it's, it might be not just for film professionals, but also uh, for other people who are not working maybe for many years in the film industry. Um, basically, um, I, I have to say, in Germany, uh, it's a big country. Um, we have 82 million uh, people living there. Uh, it also means that we have a, a big uh, film industry. Um, the, the biggest part of the German film industry is uh, television, TV. So it's the second largest uh, TV market worldwide after the United States, actually. But I'm not going to talk about TV today. Uh, all, all the programs I'm explaining is for cinema. I, I think I have to make it uh, clear um, because uh, these are different things. So to produce the film for television or produce the film for cinema for the for the big screens. Of course, it, of course, it's possible that uh, some TV channels or streaming platforms might part participate in the financing of a theatrical cinema project, but um, uh, but they would never fully finance a project that is going to cinema uh, first. So the, and the TV financing is also a little bit different from the cinema one. So that's why I just want to make clear everything what I'm explaining now, it's related to uh, cinema, to feature length films, what means a film what is uh, 70 minutes or longer. So I'm not talking a lot about shorter formats. Of course, we have, uh, especially in documentary television, you have a lot of one hour films and other lengths, uh, that's true, but I'm not going to talk about this. Uh, so for, for cinema, cinema requires uh, so-called so feature lengths. And what is minimum, minimum in Germany, it's minimum 78 minutes. If the film has to be minimum 78 to be uh, to release in um, in, in the cinema. Uh, uh, generally, how German producers um, are working or financing. Um, so in in Germany, we have a extended system of um, money, public so called public money. What is coming uh, particular, particularly uh, from the from the state, uh, particularly from the regions, and usually our producers are financing the projects mainly mainly with uh, public money. Of course, there are also some commercial projects, but usually we have we don't have. Um, Private investments and private investors, I mean, from people who have money, rich people, or maybe oligarchs who would finance films. So that's not the case actually in Germany for German projects. Um, some bigger commercial projects, they might also be particular financed uh, privately, but this will be money from the bank, which you have to give back after the film is released and uh, makes some income. So, but most most of the uh, films, small films or films who go to festivals and uh, will be released internationally in theaters, they are funded by German public money. And we have um, different uh, sources of this money. And um, one is the Ministry of Culture, uh, what has uh, different funds. Uh, then we have the National Film Fund, FFR, the National Film Fund. I, I just will, will open my PDF. I just want to explain it in general. The National Film Fund gets his money out of the German box office. What, what does it mean? Uh, Germany, Germany has um, like uh, 4,700 screens. <clears throat> it means uh, not cinemas, but screens, and um, and the, uh, from, from all the, this, the income of the screens, a certain percentage from every ticket uh, goes to the national film fund. So it can, but it should not be only a German film. It can be, it can be also an um, an international film, but the, 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 it's, it's regulated by law. So a certain percentage of the ticket goes to the national film fund. And the National Film Fund reinvests this money 
uh, into new productions. Um, can is, uh, the National Film Fund is also supporting the cinemas, infrastructure of cinemas, and also can support uh, the uh, um, the theatrical distributors. So that that's uh, that's in general. Now and now I'm going to open uh, the presentation. Um, and before I'm starting that, one important thing is that um, for every project we need uh, to apply to every kind of German funding, to any kind of German funding, it's um, um, it's uh, this is this is really uh, this is really something um, you need. You will need the co-producer. So this is very this is very important. So you, a, a co I mean, the a producer, only producers, only German producers can apply to any kind of German uh, public money. So this is very important to know. So for foreign producers, it's not it's not possible to apply to German uh, public funding. But I think that it's it's usually a thing. Uh, normally in other countries, it's the same. But uh, I have to say it because uh, some people who are, uh, don't know. These regulations uh, very well. Then they might think um, they, they, they might think that it's um, in, the, in in another way. So, it, so it's not, of course. <laughs> so um, I'm going to start the presentation now. Just a second. I have to open it, yeah, and then I try to understand the yeah. So I think you, you can see. It. So this is the um, uh, this is um, an overview of uh, German film funds, um, funding the funding system and the locations. It's um, it's um, as I said, uh, it's in English. Actually, the presentation is in English, but I know that you got it translated into Russian. So for the ones who don't speak English uh, very well, you can read it in in Russian. So this is, uh, as I mentioned, it's the um, it's the German Federal Film Board. This is the National Film Fund, where I said who uh, gets the money out of the theatrical market. Um, so everybody supports feature films at all stages. Um, it means um, it can be a fiction, it can be a document a documentary, but it also can be uh, animation. You know, so it's uh, this this kind of genres are possible, and they would uh, all stages of uh, support means uh, it's not just production, but they would also support uh, script writing, development of the project, and then later the production. And after uh, there is a fund for exploitation, means the theatrical distribution in Germany can also be supported by the uh, German federal film board. So it's uh, very important, and uh, this is um, a very important financing tool for for a lot of bigger German films, I would say. Uh, the budget here is that the budget is around seventy six million, but this is was before COVID, as you as you can understand, uh, COVID uh, was very difficult for our uh, uh, film industry, but especially for the cinemas, like in other countries as well, because in Germany. The cinemas have been closed for uh, for four like four months in 2021, and another six months in 2020, and another six months in 2021. So the uh, the federal film board has less income, uh, particular, and will also have less income for this year. It means the budget for next year is uh, much smaller. Um, it can be particularly replaced by the minister, by the government, by the Corona help funds, but um, it's not quite sure if, um, uh, how big the replacement will be. So, so we, we, will see, we will see, we will see. Um, then we have the German Federal Film Fund, uh, GFFF 1 and 2. Uh, this is um, for bigger productions who are coming to shoot in Germany. Um, I have I have to admit uh, that uh, Germany is um, one of the few countries now internationally who doesn't we, we don't have a tax incentive or a tax refund system. Many countries in, in Europe, but not just in Europe, they have so-called tax refund system. What what is a tax refund system? It means uh, if you would go to another country, for example, you have a Kazakh film 
and uh, a project, and the, but you are not shooting the project um, in Kazakhstan, but you are going to shoot the project somewhere in Europe, maybe in Lithuania or maybe in Poland uh, or in Belgium. So then, um, in these countries, uh, you you can uh, you have a tax rebate, but means um, you can get up to thirty percent, somewhere twenty, somewhere thirty of the money you are spending in this country, you get it back from the tax authorities of this country. So this is additional money. It's not the firm fund money. It's a more or less an automatic system. For this, for this you also would need uh, a co-producer, but it is, it's, it's more or less uh, automatically not depending what you are shooting. It's, it's, uh, it's actually because the, the money you are spending in the country, you get 20 or 30 percent back. Germany doesn't have this kind of system um, for different reasons, and we are almost the only ones who don't have it. And that's why we have different home funds um, uh, run by the Ministry of Culture who somehow replace it or somehow are not similar, but going in that direction. And these are and these home funds, they're general, uh, the DFSF1 and DFSF2. As you see, you can get up to 20% uh, of the approved costs, you know, so you'll get from that from this uh, fund. Um, the German, uh, for German spend can be 25, you know, so this, these are the two funds. It's, it's for international co-productions with German co-producers for the first part and for the, the second part production service providers. So it can be a production service providers like a big studio like we have from Germany, we have the Babelsberg Film Studios, or we have Bavaria Film Studios. You know, if a bigger production is coming and uh, using the studios, so they also can get a part of the, the money back from their services. And then on the top of this, uh, on, on wait, sorry, on um, the, the budgets. Uh, so the there are some minimum budgets for the film, and so so it's not so much for small films. Which have a budget that is uh, just three or four hundred thousand euro. So it's um, it's a big uh, it, it's for bigger films uh, only. Um, uh, it, it doesn't really make sense also for small art So it's really for bigger films. Um, for the service production, the the, uh, the production cost it should be more than twenty million. I I know. It's totally unrealistic for a Kazakh film, for example. I'm, I'm just uh, showing it for you as an information that you have the system. So it would it would work only for bigger, for very big UV productions or for very, very big uh, American US productions. Um, then we have another fund, uh, the third fund inside the Ministry of Culture is the, the German Motion Picture Fund. Um, this this was uh, additionally set up uh, from the Ministry of Economic Affairs, and it has over 10 million uh, euro budget every year. And um, it's 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 a grant it's grant up to 20 percent of the um, uh, of the approved cost. And this is uh, German also for German based co producers. So you can also combine. Uh, you can also combine some programs uh, uh, together. This is also possible on the national level. But most of the productions they go for the, the first one or may, or maybe the second one, depending on the on the criteria and the kind of project you are shooting. So this is basic the information uh, for this. I, to be very honest, um, these national film funds, they are not so interesting for the co-production with smaller countries, with smaller budgets. It's more for majority German films. Uh, uh, majority German film um, means over over 50, over 50 percent, over 50 percent of the film. And um, so it's um, or, or over 50 percent of the budget of the film uh, should be raised should be German money. Um, so it's, it's for majority German films and not so much uh, for majority other productions. Um, so I give it just as an information. 
despite of the fact that we have the national funds, we have a lot of regional funds. The system is um, the system is not uh, not so easy uh, to under understand. Um, I, I, so, um, I would say uh, you know, the Germany is um, is is not so centralized, organized like many other countries, like maybe France. So we, we have even even culture uh, is not mainly run by the state, but by the regions. So in uh, in Germany we have this uh, 15 Bundesländer, the 15 regions. They have their own president, their own government, and um, culture and education is uh, legally also left to decide by these regions. It means they have also their own cult cultural funding. And um, most, most of the regions, they have their own film fund, or some of the regions have one film fund together. So, and if you look into the um, German the German financing on and the, the budgets, uh, let, let's say the, um, the budgets we have. So, so I would say that um, all the, the, the regional funds together, they have a budget of uh, almost 150 million euro. Uh, what, what is uh, also big, it's actually bigger as the budget of the national film fund alone, you know, so it's also very important money uh, for our producers to, to apply and as a tool for, for financing of the, of the productions. So um, yeah, yes. So I I don't want to go for through all the regional film funds. I I just would like uh, to show it a little bit uh, on the on the scheme. No, they always um, have uh, websites. You can look up um, actually the, the, the basically the basic informi information of every film fund is also on the on their websites. So here you can see the regions. I I would say the the biggest regional film funds um, we have is actually um, Mecklenburg Berlin Brandenburg, the, the the Berlin Brandenburg region. What is here? Uh, then, um, then uh, the Bavarian one. It's number eight. It's the film and fancy from Bavaria. Bavaria. Um, both of the and Nordrhein Westphalia. It's film made stift on Nordrhein Nordrhein Westphalia. It's number two. I think all all, all the three of them have a yearly budget one is more than thirty million euro and um, so it's very reasonable. But also the other funds. They have uh, between, uh, I would say, between uh, seven and another 50 million. But what, what you have to know, it's possible to combine different uh, sources of financing. So you can combine the National Film Fund financing uh, together with the, with the regional one. You can also try to combine uh, different regional funds. The only thing um, uh, you have to know, a very, a very important thing you have to know, is that for the regional funds, uh, they usually can apply only a producer who's based in the region. So it means, um, I mean, it's possible to apply for another region, but it's not so easy for maybe for a corporate uh, project what combines different funds. So, so if you want to shoot in end, end you have to. Uh, Spend this money in the region, so you um, you cannot take the money, for example, from Berlin to Bavaria, or or let's say, for example, from uh, uh, from Schleswig Holstein, from Hamburg. Actually, the Hamburg Film Fund they changed their name just a month ago. That's why it's not right here, but I, it wasn't possible to update the paper. So, but you cannot take the money from Hamburg to Bavaria or the Bavarian money to Nordrhein to Köln, for example, to Cologne, to Nordrhein Westphalia. So you have to spend the money you get from the region in the region. So this is very important if you structure the production of the uh, of the schedule uh, of, 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 uh, of your spending, the production schedule and also the spending, you have to think about where you want to shoot. But actually, it's also not possible that all the money from the regional funds has to be spent in the region. So you cannot take this money out 
of Germany and to spend it, for example, in uh, Kazakhstan or Kyrgyzstan or somewhere. Else. So this is not possible. It's, it's very important for you just to know if you want to go for co-production. The money from the National Film Fund FFR, if you would get it, uh, you can spend uh, in other countries, but still the, the project you are working with has to qualify as a German film, but it's not so easy for minority co-production. You know? For minority co-productions, it's mainly the regional funds or the partners or the producers coming with the regional funds or the partners, and but this is the money you have to spend in the region. So this is, um, I think, uh, a general rule you have to to try to understand um, that um, if you are looking for a German co-production, I mean, if you are coming uh, with a project from your country and you are looking for a German co-production, it, it's it normally would not be money you can take to Kazakhstan and, and to shoot. So usually you you have to shoot in Germany or or at least to do a part of the post-production. So there are many projects who are doing a uh, part of the, the post-production. So they would go for editing in Germany. They would go for uh, sound uh, post-production, color correction or stuff like this, you know. It would be different for um, a majority German project what is going to be copied maybe in Kyrgyzstan or Kazakhstan, but it's usually not the case as far as I know. These countries uh, in Central Asia, they don't have really minority co-production schemes. So it's nothing what would work in reality. But in theory, it could look like it could look like this. Actually, I would like to ask you if there are any questions um, to this uh, funding system or any do you have any question according to this? Something you didn't understand or something. Uh, you you would like me to explore um, in a more extended way? No, no questions. <laughs> okay, if, if not, I I just um, I just go on because for me it's a little bit difficult to understand what what you know and what you don't know. So okay, so I I just I just go go on. Uh, this is um, this is a little bit. Um, uh, these are examples of financing um, to uh, related to the the types of film funds uh, I explained uh, before. And what do you see that the film funds are also supporting high end uh, drama series? The they they are not supporting only cinema. But a high-end drama series is actually a big, a high-budget project. Uh, what would go to streaming, mainly to streaming platforms later. So the in like five years ago, our regional funds they also started uh, to support uh, this kind of production. And this is the reason for this is because. Um, if the production teams would spend a lot of money in the region, it's good for the region. So they want to attract more, more productions to the regions, and that's why they started uh, actually this format. But this is only by regional film funds. It's not um, the, the national um, film funds it would uh, only, not the, the FFA, for example, they cannot uh, support any series production, only cinema, theatrical, because they get the money from the uh, theatrical market, you know, so that's not the um, uh, that's not the, that, that's actually the the difference. So the um, um, yes, so I want to go down. No, that's it actually. So that this was uh, the main yeah. Uh, if you um, if there are no questions, um, I just switch off this. Um, is part of the presentation. You can have a look on it also later. As I said, the numbers are before COVID. I mean, the budgets of the regional funds are the same or even higher, but the budget of the national fund, as I said, is different now, and I, you cannot really say how it's going to look like uh, after COVID. Okay, so I'm going to switch on this one. Oh, good. 
So um, uh, is, there, is there a question? Uh, есть ли программы для молодых профессионалов из других стран? Ага, да. So you have, yes, we have one question. Let me read it out. Okay. The question is, what programs are designed for young professionals from other countries? Are there any examples of collaboration between those funds that you have listed uh, on co-production uh, in Central Asia, like maybe some success stories or examples that you might share. Uh, the, the, first, the, first, the first question um, uh, for young filmmakers and producers, um, I have to say, um, um, unfortunately, or not, there is not really a program uh, for, for filmmakers from other countries. Because usually um, it's considered that every country has to support their own talents uh, to educate them and to bring them to a certain level to work internationally, you know. So we don't have a special program for that. But but I have to admit, uh, we have many foreign students uh, at our German film schools because in Germany, education at universities and uh, for film schools is for free. So you don't have to pay for it. So, so our film schools, especially, they have a lot of students from other countries. So even, even if you are coming from Central Asia as a student, you, you have the chance to study in Germany, film at, at one of our film schools. Film schools. Then, of course, um, you have to learn German at the moment. It's not really possible to do it only in English, for example, and, and of course not in Russian. So the the condition is that you will learn German language and uh, you will get to a certain level what it allows you to study. You actually can find out at the Goethe Institute, you have the, the Institute of German Culture and Language in all of your countries. Uh, you can you can find out uh, at the language courses what level you would need to study in Germany. So then, then you can apply for for German film school, and if they, if you make it through the, uh, let's say the, the exams uh, and the, um, uh, the the conversation, uh, you can study in Germany. And we have uh, we have students uh, from Moldova and from Eastern European countries, and uh, a very few also from from Central Asia. So, but this, if you are asking for young professionals, I think that the film school would be the only possibility because special Germany's, uh, Germany doesn't really finance um, uh, programs for, for young talents from other countries, you know, so this is um, uh, according to um, what is, what is uh, used to do, what is, what is usually what we, what we are usually doing, every country should take care of their own young generation in a way, you know. But the film schools are open, so there, there's not no no problem with that. And one other thing I would like to mention in the um, uh, in this context, the the Berlinale, I, I will write it into I will write it into the, the chat now. The Berlinale has a, a funding program, what is called World Cinema Fund, and they support projects, especially from regions which have not such a proper cinema infrastructure, which has uh, difficulties uh, to to finance uh, their projects, whatever, I'm, 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 I'm writing it into the chat. It's, um, world. Okay. Um, so I have it's big letters, <laughs> so. Um, and it's um, so it's, um, I mean, Berlinale is uh, one of the biggest film festivals all, all over the world. Maybe many of you know it. It's usually in February in, in Berlin. And, and Berlinale, yes, has uh, attached uh, this World Cinema Fund. 
And this could be very interesting for, uh, for producers uh, from your region, for, if you have a project, you know, but this is not about education, it's, it's something, having a, a project um, that you want to produce, they will help you maybe to, you to find the European or the property, so this is very good. And Berlinale has something else what is good for young talent. I'm going to write it as well. As well. It's Berlinale Talent Campus. It's um, Yeah, it's, it's, it's the Berlin Art Talent Campus. And this is for young filmmakers. Actually, that's a program what, what they run during Berlin Art. They have been years, they have sometimes 400 participants from all over the world. And this is for, for young interested filmmakers as well. So you can apply just with a project idea. You don't have, uh, you don't need to have made a lot of films before. So it's, you can also go to the Berlinale website and look at it and apply for it. Of course, for all these programs, it's very uh, important uh, to know English. So it's it's all in English language. So for that for that you don't need you know uh, there's no need uh, uh, to know German like for the universities, the film schools, but um, but for the talent campus and also for the world cinema family it's in English, but uh, I think also in general today, if you want to work internationally in the film business, uh, it's it's very important to know English. So this is uh, one of I would say one of the conditions. You know, it's, it's really very very important. And another um, another uh, question was about the cooperation the, with the regional fronts with uh, Central Asia. I mean, there, there have been a, a couple of uh, films um, the, um, at, um, for, for example, as a, a filmmaker, I, I know he comes from Kazakhstan, but he lives now in Russia. It's Sergei Dvorsevoy. Uh, all, all, his, all his films actually um, have been uh, supported by different regional funds, uh, Northern Australia, Supported it, I think the Berlin Fund. So there, there have been a couple of them, and um, for many years ago, it's, I know the film is uh, it's very old, but I, 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 I just remember that the moment there was a there was a film uh, directed by Sergei Bodrov, the Russian film director. It was called uh, it was called uh, Mongol, and it was also a co-production with Germany. You know, so this was one, and then. There is a couple of other films. I know uh, there is, a, I'll say, um, a Russian producer, Anna Kachko. She used to work a lot in Kazakhstan. I also I think she did some projects where she got some money from Germany as well. So then, you know, it's different. Um, it's all, to, to be honest, um, it's a lot depending on the quality of your project, if this project would be interesting for a bigger international audience, not just for Central Asia, but maybe also for Europe. And then if you find the right co-producer, a co-producer who's interested in that, um, he can uh, apply to the funds, he understands how to do it and what kind of chances uh, you have, and um, and then you can go, you know? So there are, I think there are a couple, a couple of uh, examples. I, I don't have the exact number, but I think in the, if you take the last 15 years, I would say we have uh, for sure like six or seven films from Central Asia who got support uh, in Germany. I think maybe even 10, because sometimes we don't know all of them, because sometimes it's it's minority just with a very small amount of money. Also, this is uh, this can be. Um, then uh, somebody is asking a short doc documentary film from Freeway, you know, the finance in Vancouver and the International Radio Festival. I was still ahead and I. Ms. Bauman, let me just read out the question as it was asked in the chat box in English. And uh, for everyone, uh, it's for recording. 
thank you very much uh, for the important information. We have produced a short documentary film, Sigus, which is now promoting at Film Freeway. We had made it to the finals at the Vancouver Independent Film Festival and the International Road Movie Festival. There are still 10 applications ahead, and I want to show the film to other film festivals that are paid. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow um, it will be known if we will go to Calvert Festival, and it's very inspiring that there are such programs that will help with the distribution. Yeah, uh, this is, um, I understand, uh, I understand the question. Uh, the thing is, uh, the thing with, uh, with paid festivals, especially, uh, especially the shorts is, um, I would say, specific, you know, it's, uh, um, it's not so easy because what means paid? It means you would get a screening fee from the festival. And um, I know it can be for shorts. Um, I'm, I, I don't know the regulations for screening fees very well. I know that there are some festivals who would pay screening fees, but it's very little, especially for short formats. Uh, the screening fees are very small because usually it's uh, usually the things are like this. If they invite you uh, to the competition, you know, the competition means you can fight for an award and uh, usually connected to the award might be some money as well. So that's why uh, if you get invited to competition, you never will get a screening fee, you know? They, they would not pay you to bring you to competition to get an award or some, some money. So this is, that's okay. But most of the festivals, almost all festivals, they have, despite of the competition, they have a lot of side programs, a lot of other programs where they show new films, uh, interesting films to their audience. And for these programs, you can ask the festival for a screening fee. Everybody can ask the festival for the screening fee. And it's, de it's depending on the size of the festival, how big the festival is, how important it is, and um, how popular it is also. You know, some festivals are in terms of image uh, more important than others. And, and then you can you can ask uh, for, the, for, for a screening fee and negotiate it uh, with them. Uh, in I know it's for, for short films, usually you don't have a sales agent or distribution, so you have to do it yourself as a filmmaker. Uh, for bigger films, it's mainly the case, most of the long, I mean the long feature length films, most of them, not all of them, they have a world sales agent attached, and these agents would negotiate with the festivals about the screening fees. So that, that's, that's the normal case, because it's, it's very time consuming, if you do everything yourself as a producer, of course, I understand it's not always so easy to find a sales agent, especially now in, in post COVID times, we have many films, even uh, some good German films who don't have a sales agent. Um, it's connected with the critical situation with the cinema market at the moment, because um, and many theaters in many countries, they have just uh, not, they are not so well attended. They don't make a lot of money out of the films. And um, so they, they will not, it means the local distributors will not pay a minimum guarantee to the world sales. So, so that means that the world sales uh, also don't have a bigger income. And at the end of the day, they're at the moment, they're taking less films for, for distribution than it used to be. So I think um, um, so I think for the um, it's difficult to advise something for the for the festival, especially if, if it's a short film. But I think as a producer, if they select you somewhere, what is already good, you can and it's not the competition. You can ask them for a screening fee. You, you, you should try, you know. But I think it's not. It will not be a big money. I don't even know what they will pay for shorts. I, I can say for longer films, the screening fees uh, with small festivals, it's like 100, 150 euro. For big festivals, it can be 500, 600. It's for big, really more reasonable festivals. And for, for very big festivals, it might be 1,000, but it's, it's, it's really a very rare case. It's almost 
just the way two homes will get it, you know. So I think the average in Spain at the moment, I would say, is between 200 and 600 euros, maybe. So that's, that's more like the average. So coming back to that question. But the, yeah, we have another question in the in the chat. Maybe you, Maya, you are going to read it? So the question, the previous question was from the user. The next question was going to be in English. Film project from German fund is to fund German cooperatives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to say it's right, but I have to take one step back. Um, if you want to go for co-production with Germany, the first thing you have to get to do is get money out of your own country. So you never can go for co-production if you don't have the money from your own country. You always have to get first the money from your own country. And if you have the money from your own country, then you can go internationally to 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 market an event and, and to find the co-producer. And 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 um, and it, and it's true. Uh, yes, you have to find a German co-producer. And actually, this is um, um, uh, this is not so easy. I I totally understand that this is not so easy for people coming from other country, and you don't need anybody. And, and and this is a, a long way, I have to say. This is a long way. And um, and uh, the only way to try to find uh, co-producers is um, to maybe to travel to other festivals and markets. And um, now I know now it's difficult in COVID times. Many, many events are, are not, um, are not uh, physical, only online. So, uh, so the, the actually the best way to find co-producers, European co-producers, I'm not talking just about Germany, is actually to apply with, with your project to some of the industry events and festivals. I mean, I mean, what do I mean? For example, uh, we have um, a Sofia International Film Festival, and it's in Bulgaria. And Sofia has an um, an industry event, uh, what is called so, uh, so Sofia meeting. I will write it. Mm -hmm. И госпожа Бауман, может быть, uh, вот этот вопрос у нас будет как бы перевод. Miss Bauman, maybe this question will be uh, basically move over to some of the other questions because I know you're going to speak about the steps that need to be made. So this is, um, I'm going to open another paper, you know, right? Just a second. Um, have to find it. Um, oh, I have to stop this. I'll try again. Um, Okay, and uh, I just try to no. Um, I'm just oh. Sorry, I have to um, have a little technical problem. Come on, meeting. I have a problem always when I want to open the, the view, it switches off my video because it's on the top. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, um, yeah, this is some of advice. Actually, um, it's this uh, this what I was writing here, it's more for uh, documentaries, you know, how to bring the films to an audience and, and, and how to go to different kinds of events, but it's the same what I, I'm just explaining. If you have a 
project uh, in a, when you are still in the process of development, you should try to bring the project to some co-production markets or pitching sessions. This is what I was writing here. It's especially for documentaries. You will have the paper only in Russian. I, I later I will write into the chat some other markets for, for fiction. As I mentioned, Sofia meetings, you know, and all these all these um, all these um, markets. They are mainly not all of them, but most of them are attached to some festivals. And this is the this is the place um, this is the place uh, where you uh, can find possible competitors, also also German competitors. Actually, the German producers are traveling uh, world, worldwide in a way. They are almost everywhere. And if they are interested in uh, international co-productions and stuff like this, um, they would uh, uh, they, um, they they would go for it. And um, so and, and it's also even if the event is online, you know. And first of all, you have to apply to these uh, forums uh, with your project. Usually. You you need you have to have a first draft maybe at least a treatment a, the synopsis your some details about the production your financing plan and everything. What what is very important also about co-production? It's all you have to understand that co-production uh, doesn't mean a co-financing. It it's really a co-production. It means uh, it's a partnership. Uh, the mistake many people are doing, they are going to the market and then they say, yeah, <clears throat> I have this script and this is the director, this is my cast, uh, this is the cameraman, this is the editor. So everything is fixed. You know, all the talent is there, the language, the shooting. Group. And then they look for somebody who would join. But I, in fact, they think that they just will have some money, you know. But this is not a co-production, you know. A co-production would be if you have maybe the script, the director, and some ideas about DOP, but then you have to leave some uh, some creative positions open for your partner because your partner should be able to talk to you about the script. Uh, you, you have to discuss the script. You have to adapt the script because uh, for an international audience, maybe it should be different than just for Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and for Central Asia. So you need space to uh, develop the project together, but you also need space for, <clears throat> for foreign participation, not just financial one, but also <clears throat> creative one. And, and uh, many people uh, make this mistake. If you come with a project and everything is settled, you have to say, yeah, I have this, this guy is the director and so then what, you know, there is no space for a partner and nobody, I mean, nobody will join it, you know, it doesn't make sense. Then you have to do it yourself with your own money. It's okay, you know, but it's not uh, not open for really partnership. I think, and, and that's why it's also what I'm, what I'm saying that uh, uh, please go, when you start to develop the project, you have a, a script uh, development, whatever, try to go to markets and to international uh, programs because um, they, they, you have to work for a long time on a script. There are, there are programs for script development and so on, you know, and I think you really have to go through this, through this uh, and then it's easier to find a copy reader. If you think you have everything ready and then it, it doesn't work, you know, it doesn't work. So this is this is for the this is what what I said is for the uh, development um, and for the development stages for documentaries. I'm going to write you in the chat some for fiction as well. <clears throat> then a uh, training programs, yeah, international training program. I mean, it's um, we have uh, for example Rotterdam Rotterdam International Film Festival. What's in January has a program attached. What is called Rotterdam Lab. And this is for young filmmakers, maybe with their first project, to get into an international community, to have some exchange about the project. And, um, and so this, this kind of things are very important because this is also a way how you can get into the international film community. And through this way, it's also easier to find a co-producer uh, a partner, maybe in Germany, maybe in some other country, you know, so it's, uh, 
uh, it doesn't matter, but, but this is the way to go. And also these labs today, they used to be only physical, but today many of them are hybrid. So they, they will be on the place particular, but also particular, uh, you can do it online. So it's uh, it's depending, you know, they all are changing now and uh, developing their standards and everything. So it's really, uh, so that's, um, that's, uh, that's the idea. Um, then what is very important is um, to find a, a sales, yeah, then the sales agent, I, I was talking, I was talking about the this sales agent and the uh, or world sales uh, is very important if you want to get your firm to it after you have, you have been able to finance it and to produce it. Uh, this is very important uh, to get it to an international audience, also to festivals, because the sales agents, they know all the festival programmers, you know, they know the profiles of the festival, so they can help you to get to a festival. Today, in, in big festivals, and it can be documentaries, uh, but also other festivals, for example, all the big documentary festivals, like uh, like like maybe uh, like Leipzig, or or IFA in Amsterdam or hot dogs, they, they get um, three to four thousand submissions. So there are three to four thousand films uh, wa wanting to get to one competition. What has just fifteen films, and the the, com the competition is huge. You know, so if if you are a total no name and uh, you never went uh, to any festival. You are one of the 4,000, and of course they are trying to watch your film, but you know they didn't know about it, so it's difficult to get there. You know, so that's why it's better to have a sales agent attached. And the sales agent, um, you try it's the latest moment to try to find it is at the rough cut stage. It means, um, it means when you have uh, already produced your film and it's in still in the editing. Because also the sales agent, they, they know very well how the um, uh, how to say how a film has to look like um, if it should if it wants to be successful at festivals and in the international market. So they will help you to how to say to finish maybe the the cut or everything. They have very important uh, arguments um, and things um, like this, you know. So that that's why. Um, uh, it's better to get them on an earlier stage. Again, um, to be realistic, it's not so easy to find it uh, today because there are so many films out and the sales agents cannot take care of so many films. But uh, let's put it this way. But if you have been at some of the pitchings here, the all these pitching sessions uh, where you can present your project in a project space, this, uh, the sales agents, they are already here. They are sitting in the audience. They are watching your pitch. They heard about your project. You know, this makes life easier actually to, to get there to the sales agent. Also, the training programs, you know, because in all training programs, you have a kind of final pitching, um, final presentation. And this is also um, going to festival programmer, to some markets, even to some buyers. So they will see. And then uh, you, it's easier for you to get to the market. Um, and also one thing what is very important and what, what many people don't do even in, uh, in Europe, it's uh, you have to make your homework. This is very, very important to make uh, your homework. It means you have every fest the festivals um, are different. I mean, not every festival brings the same type of films. Of course, some of the films of the of the winners or of the big festival titles, they will be they will be screened uh, everywhere actually. But uh, usually, um, the, the big part of the programs of the festival has a special a special direction. Let's put it this way, you know. So there there are festivals. Um, for example, they would screen more art house, also also driven films, you know, more like art films. But then you have festivals, they, they would screen more of a little bit more commercial titles, more, more, not commercial, yes, but mainstream maybe for, for a broader audience. Uh, some festivals go uh, according to subject, they would screen uh, more films 
which have a um, um, political and, and social subject, social impact, for example, in documentary festivals like, like IFA in Amsterdam, they have a very strict, a very strong editorial line what, what goes, uh, what goes uh, to um, um, and a very strong editorial line uh, what goes to the um, and to social and, and political questions and also and, and so are other festivals and it's not it's not a secret uh, it's not it's not a secret at all you just have to go to the website of the festival all these websites are usually if they are done professional and all the bigger festivals have professional websites they would they would run over all year then you can look into the archive you can see all the films they screened last year, two years ago, three years ago. You, know, you cannot see the films itself, but the information about the films. And from that, you will understand what is the direction. And then you can relate it to your own project. And you can understand um, if your own project would work with this profile or would better work with this profile, you know, things like this. So this is very important because one, a very annoying thing is also for the festivals actually if people are applying with projects who don't have any relation to the profile of the festival you know they, they, and from this point they just see that you didn't do your homework that you don't have any idea about what they are screening and it's not so good for your own image for the future you know if you uh, didn't do your job so that it's better to have a look on it and to understand if it would fit or not and then you can always sometimes it's not always very clear so then you can ask for advice you can ask the sales for advice or maybe ask the producers you know if it's a good idea to apply there or not so it's all, all about this and then here the the list of sales agents is also mainly uh, document documentaries um for documentaries it's just a just a selection there there are there are many many of them um according to the sales agents uh, you also you know it's um also good if you if you look for example the information of the for the of the festival if you look to the web so for example you go to berlinale and you check out what kind of films have been screened at berlinale in 2020 uh, all this information about the films contains also the, the name of the sales agent you know so this is also an important information. You see, ah, there is this film maybe from this region and with this certain subject or director, and then you see, ah, it's with this company, with the sales agent. Then, it, then you can go to the website to, of the sales agent, and then you see the lineup of the sales agent, if, what kind of films they are doing, um, what what kind of directors uh, they are promoting. It's, it's very, very often they also, I mean, big sales agents, they have a very big lineup and they might do very different kinds of films, but then there are smaller sales agents. Uh, they, they have a certain, again, a certain editorial line where they would go. And um, so this is, um, yeah, you have, you have, you can check it. But um, what I want to say is you can, you can get a lot of information in advance out of the internet you know if, if you check the films if you check the sales agents you go to the websites you will see the kind of projects they do <clears throat> this is very important even for producers you know for example if you see um, uh, a project what you think is interesting or uh, a film what you think it's not just interesting could be could be um, the producer could be interesting for your project, or you would think maybe it's a co-producer for me. You can also go to the website of the production company. Most, most, not all of these production companies, but most of them, they have a, a website where at least you can see the films they are working on. You know, so, so they have films that they, they would write. These are finished films uh, we did, and these are films in, uh, in development or other films. You know. And this is, um, and, 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 uh, and then from that, you can also see, does it fit my project or, or not? So this is um, in general how it goes. And then now I'm looking to the, um, yeah, are there any other? I, I'm going to write uh, some into the chat 
some Asa mm -hmm. good um, uh, there are some festivals uh, which are specialized on projects from Eastern Europe. So they can apply for pitching. I already mentioned Sofia meetings. Uh, then we have film festival Cottbus, and there is an uh, industry pitching event, what is called Connecting Cottbus. I will write it now. Mm. And connecting countries on the writing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is this is um, focused on uh, Eastern Europe, and then in Germany we have another festival also focused on uh, Eastern Europe. It's called Go East. I'm going to write this as well. Go East. Uh, then uh, for Eastern Europe, from the Big A festivals, uh, very interesting is Kalorivari. The festival is actually still going, uh, but they have a um, uh, they have an uh, industry event for works in progress, what is uh, um, films which are already in editing, but still looking for sales agents and festivals and maybe some final gap financing. It's called Eastern Promises. I'm just going to, uh, to write it. And Eastern um, Eastern Promises uh, at Calvary Valley Film Festival, for example, uh, this year they uh, they did it uh, the way that they had the, um, uh, the 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 industry section online. They would hold it online before the festival, like a week for the festival. They uh, did uh, online all the projects, the presentations, uh, the, the pictures, and then. The festival is running now. The festival started later, and some of the participants uh, decided uh, to go. Uh, some of the participants um, uh, did it only online, so it's kind of um, up to you. You know, there there are different ones. Um, if you are um, uh, if you are a beginner and you have your first film, um, and uh, I, for example, it would. Um, it would not make sense uh, to go to the to the big festivals like Berlinale has a co-production market, or Venice, what's coming now in September, has a gap financing market. I mean, Berlinale co-production market uh, requires that you have already 30% of your budget in place. And so this is something for more advanced filmmakers. I mean, if you do your second film or your third film and you have already a part of the budget in place, then you uh, can apply to this co-production market at Berlinale. But for beginners, I would not advise this because it's it's not really for this kind of people. And the same is for Venice, the gap financing market. Um, the gap financing means it's for projects uh, which have already 70% the, of the financing in place and they are in the final stage of production. But this is also for more established filmmakers and more established projects. It, it, it doesn't really make sense, maybe for first time uh, for first time director, only if you have maybe a very experienced uh, producer on board on, and you have already almost finished the financing maybe. But it's not uh, a place where I would go if I'm coming from Central Asia and it's my first project, for example. You know. In, for you, it makes more sense to go to events um, for the for the docs. The um, uh, I, I would say East Dock platform, as I have in the in the in the paper. You know, it's like East Dock platform. It would be good for you. Uh, Yerevan, it's a festival in Czech Republic. Would be good for you. Uh, more more the documentary forum would be good for you. Maybe also Doc Leipzig could that your market. This can also work. But Itfa forum hot dogs. It's difficult, you know. It's it's more for uh, more established ones, and also in uh, coming back to fiction projects, I would think um, it's the the ones I mentioned are good for you. It's like Sophia, Sophia meetings is very good. 
um, with the corpus, connected corpus, you can go, you can try go east and also Kalavivari Eastern promises if you are in a in a later stage. So this, these are the places um, where you can meet people, uh, where you can meet people who are interested in projects uh, from from your region. And um, yeah, this is something um, I, I would advise more 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 this way, I think. Um, yes, just I'm checking. Do we have some more questions? No, I think I switch off this um, and uh, now. So, um, yeah, I have actually. Um, do do you have um, any more questions um, uh, according to the co-production? I mean, the co-production markets, maybe how to get there, what to do, or things like this. No. Ms. Bauman, while our participants are writing their questions, let me ask mine. It's kind of a general question. Do you think you can characterize or describe the films that you have received that that received funding, like you know, or had received funding earlier? Uh, from the Central Asian, uh, a, I mean, films from Central Asia, but the funding in Germany. What was the co-production scheme there? Who initiated? Who found whom? Who negotiated with whom? Who was the first one to contact? Is it the German producers who are like, you know, sports agents were looking for talents all around the world? Or is it vice versa? Is it uh, that they get a lot of uh, uh, suggestions and offers from different countries of the world, of the world, and they are just selecting them? Let me tell it this way. Overall, this is an initiative. It, this initiative always came from producers and directors from Central Asia. More from the producers and also from the directors uh, out of the Central Asian region. So <clears throat> this is um, this is the normal way. It's uh, it's not so much that <clears throat> it's not so much that our producers would go and look for projects from the region. Of course, they are interested because there are is also a lot of talent, and as, as you can see at festivals, some of the films from Central Asia make it to bigger festivals, like from Kazakhstan or. Uh, uh, like from uh, Kyrgyzstan, you know, it, it's interesting. So they would look, look on them. Um, the only thing when it's going to add Nazare, for example, if some of the directors uh, from the region have been already in some competition in Venice or maybe Berlinale or in Cannes or San Sebastian Locarno, um, the German producer would look at the talent and they would ask if this director has a new project. So this is the only case, the only case when our people uh, coming to the talent in the region and asking for a new project or to, some information about a new project. Because in this case, they have already seen the work of the director, they have only the, already seen the work of the also the, 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 the actors and, and so on. And so they, they can make their mind up if it's interesting for them or not, or if it would be um, uh, internationally, um, I would say, well received. And then they, they would go by themselves and ask. But, but usually uh, the initiative has to come from the producer in Central Asia and uh, or maybe from the director. Uh, this is clear. So, so they have to go and uh, and to find partners for their project. And it's always it's always easier for people who had already um, a film internationally released or at least a previous film, so they they can watch the work of the director. The difficult thing uh, is really first time directors and first time writers and maybe first time producers. What is very very difficult for a foreign producer if you if you to work with somebody 
who didn't have a film before, um, a long film or even a short film, who didn't who uh, who didn't have a, even not in production and not as a director or writer. This is very difficult because it's like a black box, you know. You you should go with somebody you have no idea if it's going to be good or not. <laughs> so this is very I, I to be honest, it's very difficult. I don't exclude it's possible, but it, it's it's more difficult. It's easier for people who at least get a film, a local film. What was released in um, in the cinemas in your own country or in a festival in your own country, then at least you can read this film as a reference to the possible partner, and the possible partner uh, can have a look on it and um, see if it's interesting for him or not for her. You know, so this this is very important. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Thank you. Uh, there is one more question on what should young script writers should pay attention to in current situations. I would add, you have a third document that you can uh, show. It's about the current situation on how to promote festivals uh, in the COVID situation. So let's use this question as a transition to the third document. We have only 10 minutes to go. So, uh, so let's talk about that. Young, young script writers. Actually, actually um, uh, good script writers are, are very wanted people. So everybody is looking for good script writers. And I have to say that we don't have enough uh, in Europe and it's uh, actually um, internationally where everybody is looking for them. What, what is important? I mean, um, important is the um, if you if you are talking about the choice of the subject, whatever, if it comes to films from Central Asia, I think uh, the most important, uh, the most interesting subject for us coming from Central Asia, it's about the contemporary life in Central Asia. So I think an international European audience would be maybe not so interested in some big historical films uh, about the history of some of the Central Asian countries, maybe thousand years ago or 500 years ago or something like this, you know. This is not really something <clears throat> that would be interesting for us, but for us it's very interesting to learn more about the region, about the countries, how people are living today, what kind of problems they have, uh, how, um, how their everyday life is looking like, um, especially the young generation. So what are the dreams of the young generation? Maybe the conflicts they have. Uh, young people, do they want to stay in the in the country and to uh, uh, build their future there? So, so what, what is this? Or uh, is, the, is, uh, is, is it still like this that the part of the people want to leave the country? And, uh, you know, this is... Um, so these are, are all questions which, which are very interesting for us also the on the on the background of the of the globalization the background of climate change the background of let's say uh, uh, diversity in a way but uh, also the, the background of uh, digital stuff you know so is it uh, for example in uh, in central asia it's a very 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 rich culture a very old culture um, but how this culture is transforming to the contemporary world, you know, all the use of uh, deep, uh, smartphones and internet is, you know, how does it look like? I mean, or, or is there a difference between uh, this life in the city and uh, life in the villages or in the mountains? So, you know, this is uh, this kind of thing. And what I can say <clears throat> from my experience or um, I went uh, going to many festivals and markets it's always the most interesting for people if they see uh, some, some story of that how people are living there today how uh, how what kind of conflicts they have you know we are learning something so this in, in terms of uh, of script writers I think the choice of the subject is very important it should have this kind of uh, uh, relation to our times and and all the conflicts or, or all the problems maybe 
and it should be very well written. And the last what I would add that there are um, there are some good script writing uh, programs also in Europe. I mean, if you would go for this, for example, where, where you can also apply for script development. For example, there is one what is called uh, I'm writing it. It's run from uh, well, from and from a Polish company, uh, but it's very good internationally. It's called um, uh, Script um, East. Maybe you can find Script East. And then there is a Czech the program for developing projects also very uh, dedicated to Eastern Europe. It's called Midpoint. Midpoint. So this, these are the two ones, especially for scripts. These are very good programs, you know. So, and now I'm coming to my last paper. I try, yeah, I, I try to share it. Yeah. So I hope I hope you can see it. It's, it's actually a it's actually uh, short. It's short. It's just a little bit um, after we all we all understand that the that the theatrical market and especially also the festival market will not be the same after the pandem pandemic like it used to be before. So it, it it just doesn't go back to that. And how it's going to look like is also not so not so exactly to describe. But we but we can already say it's uh it that many festivals and markets uh, go on a hybrid and um and i think the hybrid markets uh and the, the industry events which go hybrid i think it's a chance especially for people coming from central asia because um it makes it from my point of view a little bit more more fair because you can participate even you don't have the money uh, to travel because you know and I, I totally understand if you come from maybe Tashkent or from uh, Bishkek or whatever and you have to go to even to Berlinale to Berlin or to Cannes or Venice it's very expensive you know the flight is expensive the accommodation is expensive and uh, as a filmmaker from that region what is not so rich you might uh, not have um, the money to go you know so this and, and usually just a few people can go, but if it's high, but it's, it's a part of the industry is online. What we see now for many markets, you can participate. Uh, you can you pay for the accreditation fee. You know what it's like. I don't know, uh, one hundred. Um, um, uh, depending, it's um, sometimes one hundred euros, sometimes two hundred, whatever. But this is the money maybe you can afford, and then you are um, a part of it uh, online. What is very good, you can try to go with uh, this project. So that's why for you, for the future, if you want to go somewhere, it makes always sense also to check if the event is <clears throat> hybrid and maybe you can go online. Of course, it's um, difficult if you are a newcomer and you don't need any, you don't know anybody personally, it's very difficult to make friends online. This is something we all understand. But maybe you you go to one market physically, you get to know some people, and you can do some answers online. So I think this is the future, and I think this is um, it's a big chance for people who are coming from regions which are not so close to the central ones in the West. Let's put it this way, you know. So I I I, I really think it's a change, and also what is also uh, what is also changing. It's coming more. It's coming more from America, from the U.S., especially uh, festivals like Sundance. So they would more and more prefer films um, which are coming from different regions in the world, not just from the central ones, and films made by filmmakers from the region. And I think this is also uh, coming back to Central Asia. I think it's also a good chance for talents from this region because the uh, big also big festivals and markets, they will be more open now, more open uh, for projects coming from the region because it's it's in, in what we learn about it, uh, it's a different approach, you know, different 
point of view, it's always, uh, how to say, gives you a better understanding if somebody from the from this country or from this culture is doing a film about their own culture and their own problems today um, in relation if somebody else is coming, like, I don't know, a director from Germany or uh, from Russia and, and shooting a film there about the problems in the region, you know. So this makes a difference. It doesn't mean that in the future we will only see films from local filmmakers, but uh, local filmmakers get are getting more important. Right? And I think uh, this is very good, but, but it doesn't mean that the, um, in the future a filmmaker from Kazakhstan cannot shoot the film in, uh, let's say, Poland or whatever. Of course it's possible. It would be also interesting, but uh, for, for now, I think, the chance for for talents from even more far away regions are better after the pandemic than it used to be before. This is uh, uh, this is um, this is this is the good news. Um, the maybe the uh, the bad the bad news is that um, um, less that the festivals, as I wrote here, the festivals will show less less films. It's for different reasons. The lineup of the festival gets smaller, so they would show less films. It means the competition gets higher, and of course, it will be, it will be, we will have many films who do not get to the big festivals, uh, or even maybe not so small ones. But that's the reality as well, you know. So because they have to focus more on their main editorial line, and uh, for for. Um, uh, different reasons, also financial, but they cannot show so many films anymore. So they have, they have to be more focused. So th there will be more competition and also question to the quality of the films. But we will see, you know, it doesn't mean it's going to be bad. And then this always question what we have, um, what we have with um, waiting with a film or not. Uh, usually we had this the situation that many many films they would um, there are some filmmakers they would wait for a certain festival they, they think i want to go let's say uh to berlinale or to ifa and i want to be there and i would not try the other festivals but this is a this is a mistake it, it might have been working in former times but now it doesn't work uh, work anymore if you wait just for the one and then the one will not select you and the chance of that you not are getting selected are much bigger now than it used to be. Then you know, and then the films, the film is getting old. The other problem is if you come, for example, a film where the production year is 2020 and you didn't make it to a festival in 2021, it's very difficult to get selected somewhere in 2022 because in 2022 all the films from 2020 2021 will run for the festivals and the festivals. They, they prepare more the new films and not the ones from 2020, you know. So that would be also be my advice. If, if your film is finished, it doesn't matter when it's going to be finished, uh, try to submit it to many festivals or talk with your work says, if, if you have a work says, talk to them and, uh, and, and have a kind of festival strategy where you want to go first and second and so on. And, but you have to submit many in the same time to try to make it somewhere. This is very, very important. This is very important. Yeah. So I think for me, from my side now, <laughs> I think, I hope I made it in the time. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you have some questions. Thank you very much. Uh, well, we're already three minutes over time. Uh, maybe if someone has like a final question or the burning question, I think we can address it now. If there are no further questions, uh, let me just make a couple of small and final announcements. Like I said it before, the recording will be available on the YouTube channel. If you haven't been able to be present today, or if you haven't been able to fully to be fully present today, you will be able to get it on YouTube. Plus, this particular webinar is only part of a bigger series of webinars dedicated to the movie industry of Central Asia. And basically, in the very soon in the upcoming month, we'll continue with our webinars. The announcements will be featured at our website.
So please, I'd like to call upon you to subscribe just to be fully informed about the upcoming events. Uh, since we don't have any further questions, I assume that everything's fine, everything's cool. We'll be digesting this information, just keep on working on, trying to learn more about the festival culture, trying to capture the international movie markets. So, Ms. Simona Baum, thank you very much for the very interesting presentation, very informative presentation. I think uh, you started the series of webinars really well. You set the right tone for the future events. So thank you very much again. Thanks to our distinguished audience. Thank you very much. Goodbye, and we'll see you soon again. Good luck.